Hello there. What is going on, everyone? Today we're going to be doing another ship breakdown for Star Wars Armada, the amazing miniatures game that, you know, I love to talk about. We're going to be talking about the Venator Star Destroyer, the most iconic and largest ship of the Republic fleet, and of course, does also bear striking resemblance to Jar Jar Binks if you look hard enough. Uh, if you guys are new here to the channel, we are still giving away a lightsaber, so all you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. Also, we'll be doing 12 Days of Life Day giveaway uh, starting in December, so uh, stay tuned for all of that. Again, all of that is just for subscribers who also leave comments. Anything that does not get claimed for the 12 Days of Life Day giveaway are going to go rolling over into Patreon, so Patreon patrons already get uh, giveaways and other cool stuff. You can check more about that if you want to check out the links in the description below. But uh, also, they also get stuff that goes unclaimed, so that's another cool thing. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into this particular uh, breakdown. If you want to learn more about Star Wars Armada, we have a great family-friendly Discord. There's links for that in the description below. Also, I'll put some links over here towards the end so you can watch some more videos. Um, the Venator Star Destroyer comes in two varieties, the Venator 1 and the Venator 2. It is a pretty large ship with nine hull, four shields in the front, three shields on each side, and two shields in the rear. It's not the most mobile of ships, but it does have speed three capability with only a little bit of turning once it's at speed three, only that one yaw at the second joint. But uh, if it's going a little slower speed one or two, it gets a yaw at each of its speeds. So it's uh, probably best at about speed two. Uh, it has uh, a single brace, a single redirect, a contain, and the lovely, lovely salvo. And uh, the different variants cost 90 or 100 points. Uh, it's a three command ship with four engineering. The squadron valiance is uh, going to be a little bit different there. And we'll talk about, about that a little bit more. Uh, but in a lot of ways, the ship is sort of a, uh, a kind of a mix between an Imperial Star Destroyer and a Victory Star Destroyer, uh, but but not really as you know with the same capabilities of either, uh, and and kind of more of a kind of a workhorse suited for just about any job that the Republic has. It serves as a pretty good flagship. It serves as a pretty good carrier. Uh, well, and when I say pretty good, uh, I mean pretty darn good uh, in both of those respects. And uh, and has some special tricks too with the uh, the Sfat cannon that can shoot uh, an ignition arc out of the side. Uh, of course, while that's not a Venator only upgrade, it is certainly a Star Destroyer only. And since this is the only Star Destroyer for the Republic, at least in game right now, we may. Uh, at some point see victories or other things like that uh, but that's another kind of a unique capability that the Venator has and we're going to look at some builds a little bit later on and some different ways that you can run this particular ship as far as firing arcs, it does have a pretty wide frontal arc, uh, but it's not quite as wide as certain other ships. It's still it's still uh, kind of a standard you know wide arc front uh, front ship. Now it's dice in the front aren't necessarily the uh, the most powerful. It's it's kind of like well balanced in its front arc. So this is a ship that actually really kind of wants to double arc rather than do like a gunnery teams and just everything out the front arc. Uh, this one actually does really really well with its side shots included into the mix. Whether you're doing a uh, flanking type of build with SFAT cannons or if you are just kind of trying to uh, mix and match your front and side arcs on the same target. Uh, that's usually kind of you want to sort of do a, a kind of a, a, a hinged type of approach uh, in a lot of cases or, you know, kind of dead on and then turn a little bit to really try to maximize your firepower. But this is a ship that's not really all centered around firepower. It's also centered around fleet support and carrier ability and uh, and having, you know, at least moderate maneuverability. So, again, it's it's kind of overall well suited to just about all roles. Um, and it does certainly excel in some of them. Let's take a look at the individual uh, ship cards here. So first, let's talk about the Venator 1. Now, the Venator 1 has 3 Command, 3 Squadron, and 4 Engineering. Uh, its front arc is very reminiscent of the Victory 1 in that it's got 3 Black and 3 Red, meaning that it works uh, fairly well at long range, but it's also very, very deadly at close range. So this one does kind of want to get up close and personal with you. Uh, it's got a little bit of every color in the size with a black... 
uh, two black, a blue, and a red, and then uh, rainbow, one of each in the back. So uh, again, it's it's still a, a universal threat. This one is going to be very, very deadly up close. Of course, it is also going to take a lot of damage from enemy ships up close as well. It's uh, anti-squadron is two blue, which does kind of give it a lot of different options for uh, for potentially doing some nice flak attacks. There's a lot of different things that you can potentially do, like heavy fire zones and things like that. Uh, but again, two blue is is not bad, and it's going to also uh, give you you know a lot of uh, a lot of reliability for the dice. You got a 50/50 shot on a blue of getting a flak, so uh, that gives you a much better odds when you have two of them. Uh, for for upgrades, we have officer, of course. We have weapons team. We have fleet command. We have offensive retrofit, ordnance, and turbo laser. Uh, and and so this is going to be a good you know option here. When you look at these, you think fleet command. Well, this is going to make for a fantastic flagship or fantastic support ship uh, because of the fleet command. It's just a good centrally uh, located piece that's going to have something that's going out for everybody. Uh, but then again, a lot of builds because this is only ninety points. A lot of builds for the Republic will use more than one Venator. It doesn't have to be just one Venator in your build, although that certainly does work if you want to run a couple of Peltas and con uh, Consulars and things like that. Uh, it makes a very good central piece. Uh, the fact that it's got four shields in the front and then nine hull makes it a little bit tanky, even though this ship does not have a defensive retrofit. Also, I'll point out that this ship, while it does have some blue dice, does not have the ion cannon slot, uh, as do none of the Republic ships right now. This is the, uh, the, the elusive slot that, uh, that many ships tend to have across the board, except for the Republic. They have no ion cannons whatsoever. So, uh, And that's going to be more of an issue when we get to the Venator 2. Venator 2 has lots more blue dice, but still no ion cannon slot. So, uh, so that's uh, that's something worth noting. Now, the Venator 2 uh, changes a couple of things. The first thing that's most significant about the Venator 2 is the fact that it has five squadron value. That's a really, really large squadron value for a uh, for a large ship, for a hundred point ship at that. Uh, the points, of course, do go up to 100 points over here, so uh, it's going to cost you a little bit more, but it's still cheaper than a Star Destroyer. It's still a pretty good value uh, for what you're getting here. Now, this is uh, going to have a blue and a black die for its anti-squadron, and it's going to have two of each color in the front, giving you a little bit of blue die, a little bit more uh, damage at medium range, and uh, maybe a little bit less damage at close range, but with the possibility uh, or the greater possibility of getting accuracies. It has more accurate shots. It's uh, it's going to have more range on the uh, on the sides as well with the uh, two red and two blue uh, and not having any black on the sides. But the rear and the salvo, of course, which is tied to the rear attack, is still going to be one of each. Now, for upgrades, they're going to differ a little bit as well. Uh, you'll notice we do lose the fleet command. We're not going to have fleet command for this one, but we do have a defensive retrofit. So we've got officer, weapons team, uh, offensive retrofit, defensive retrofit, again, ordnance, and turbo laser. So the uh, defensive retrofit is going to be the big thing that makes this one more often chosen as the flagship. Uh, when when it is available and of course uh you know you forfeit the right to uh, have some fleet command out there because uh you're not going to be having the venator one out there so sometimes uh, people will run one of each and that's definitely uh a little bit of a um i'd say a probably a little bit more common if you happen to have two venators a venator two as your flagship and a venator one as your support type ship is uh is not a bad way to run these if you're running multiples of them of course i've certainly run uh all three before uh or three of them at, in one build before it's certainly worked we do have uh several different titles well three titles to be precise uh we're going to take a look at them from cheapest cost to most expensive we're going to look at the tranquility first the tranquility says is for a three point title it says while defending after the spend defense tokens step if you spent Fewer than two defense tokens, you may move up to two shields from one of your hull zones to the defending hull zone. If you do, the number of shields in that zone cannot exceed a minimum of six. You cannot recover shields while any uh, zone is greater than its maximum shield value. So this is a way to boost shields up extra high, especially maybe in the front if you're doing that frontal approach. Uh, and it also has 
that uh, that kind of that limiter of if you spend basically only one or fewer than two, so you know one or zero defense tokens, and that's going to kind of tie into certain other uh, abilities like Luminara as a commander, for example, works very well with this ship because it kind of hey, if I'm only spending one token, I'm going to get to do all these other things also, and it's going to make it worth it to forego spending a second defense token. So uh, so the tranquility definitely works well, I think, with Luminara and certain other effects that are going to max only using a single defense token and uh, and getting other benefits from that plus it helps you push your shields extra high so you also want to make sure you're doing some engineering to kind of re replenish uh, you know the uh, well you cannot recover shields while any zone is greater so you want to make, but you're probably gonna get shot again so you want to have some engineering uh, for when those shields do finally fall back down all right, so uh, next up we have the Triumphant. Uh, the Triumphant is a five-point title. It states that while another friendly non-flotilla ship resolves a squadron command, up to three squadrons without adept, that's basically non-Jedi, so basically three clones, at least at this point, um, uh, that uh, that act that it activates can be at close range of you, even if the squadrons are beyond close to medium range of that ship. This effect is not active during the first round. So... What is this? This is basically saying, hey, if I've got, if, if you're spread apart and uh, I can have somebody else activate some ships and they can be outside of his range as long as they're at close range of you. Now, the important thing here is that it's talking about close range, not distance one. So close range is actually, you know, about distance, a little more than I think distance one to two. So you have a, a pretty good uh, bubble of being able to help out with uh, additional squadron activations. And I, I actually really like this one for for when you're gonna have that, especially on a maybe a, a, a Venator one, where you're gonna be flying pretty far forward, trying to get in black dice range of somebody. If you're gonna be far forward and your carriers might be left behind you, especially if you're like kind of going to speed three or something to that effect, uh, and there's gonna be squadrons that might wanna be helping you press that advantage and lower those shields and get those bomber crits through and all of that good stuff. Uh, this can kind of ease ease your uh, ability to say, hey, you know what, I don't, I can't reach these guys. This can sometimes happen in later, like turns five and six too, when fleets tend to sometimes get scattered. If there's some bumping, or you know, you're kind of forced to make some turns you didn't want to make. Uh, Triumphant can kind of give you a little bit of leeway there. Although I'm not 100% sure it's going to be the best in all builds. Uh, five points isn't necessarily cheap for a title. It's kind of right in the middle, and uh, you know, I think it's only like a you know a once in a while kind of title. And then, of course, we have the Resolute, which is, I think, the best title. It's definitely my favorite overall uh, because it seems to work uh, just about all the time. And uh, and it's uh, going to start with uh, four tokens on it, and which is nice. It's one of the new uh, mechanics that came into the game with our Model 1.5. Uh, it's going to be a six-point title. Uh, and you can choose Engineering, Squadron, or Concentrate Fire tokens. Uh, it says you must choose at least two types of command tokens for this card. After you resolve a command by spending a dial, you may discard one matching command token from this card to gain that token. So basically, it's a battery for a bunch of tokens. And you can kind of, you know, everything except for nav. Um, so it's really good for when you're going to be doing, you know, engineering, uh, squadron, or concentrate fire. But usually engineering and squadron uh, are, are probably the most common two to be used with this one. Um, gives you a lot of flexibility, allows, a, you know, for a lot of... Uh, token or uh, command driven effects to be able to trigger and it's uh, it's a really good card and it actually works combos with a lot of different things and we're going to look at some build options so let's look at first off one of my favorite simpler build options is uh, basically a non-title version uh, we'll use a venator one in this example and, uh, and, and this is something, I ran something kind of like this, sort of in triplicate. I ran three Venator ones, each with the Sfat cannon. And, uh, and this is a, kind of a fun way to, to run things. Uh, and basically what you're doing in this case is you're going to be trying to maximize that side arc with the Sfat cannon. Um, you'll definitely want to make sure you have at least a couple of Concentrate Fire uh, tokens available. So you queue up some Concentrate Fire commands, uh, you know, bank a token first turn so you can start readying this thing again. Uh, but but basically you're going to get that uh, the, the big heavy blue dice attack out the side with the single black 
thrown in there. Clone Captain Zack on a single Venator. Uh, he's unique, so you can only have one of him, but he'll actually add an extra die, so you can get that second black die in there. Of course, if you have a Concentrate Fire, then maybe you can get a third black die in there. So now you can potentially, and, and this can just barely exceed long range because it is a, an ignition attack. If you're not familiar with ignition attacks, I have another video for those, so just Google, you know, Krabok ignition, how do ignition attacks work. Um, but uh, but yeah, you have ordnance experts on this thing to re-roll those black dice, and then of course we have assault concussion missiles to make sure. You know, any anytime you can roll black dice at long range, I, I always have a good time with that. And plus, you can have lots of blue in there to kind of get those accuracies to make sure that all that damage sticks. So uh, so this is a fun one, and, and it's not too expensive with all you know with only you know four upgrades on here. If you're running three of these, well, you won't have Zach on the other ones, so uh, you'll only have three upgrades on the other two, and it, it could be a lot of fun. It could definitely be some good stuff. Uh, next up, we're looking at the uh, Venator 2 here as a big, nasty, nasty carrier. Uh, we're going to be running the Resolute here and doing a couple of things. So, th so I, for, for this build, this might work with a Yularen fleet. Yularen is going to do so many really great things with this ship and this title. Uh, first off, you know, he's gonna let you, your squadron token give you plus one. So now not only are you five squadrons with a command, if you happen to have a token, maybe you pull one from Resolute, then you got two more instead of just one more. So now you can activate seven squadrons. You can, instead of, I know I, I went with boosted comms to give you longer range, but you could go with expanded hangar bay and make it eight. So you can activate eight at a single time. Absolutely, you can do that. But that might be overkill. Um, you know, you might just not have that many in range. So I, if you're going to go with something like this, I kind of think boosted comms might be a little bit safer because, I've, you know, I've seen so many times where you can have so many activations to go with, but you just can't reach them all because engagements and then you had to send these guys over here, but you had to turn this other way or somebody bumped you and you couldn't get around. So it gives you a lot more flexibility on which seven you activate. And of course, let's power up those seven. We've got Ahsoka Tano, can give some people snipe, flight controllers, we can add an extra die. Um, ECM, hey, it's a Venator 2. Let's put ECM in there, keep this big flagship carrier thing alive. Um, and then, you know, Link Turbo Lasers is always good. It works all the time, it's just fantastic. Um, you know, you got red dice just about everywhere here with the exception of your, your uh, anti-squadron battery. Uh, and then for, for giggles, I put on ordnance pods. For a lot of these builds, I like to just kind of fill up everything just to, you know, and you don't have to use all of these. I would certainly not run ordnance pods all the time. But if you're, you know, if you have that double arc, I'm like, hey, I'm going to attack this ship and, you know, ship front and side arc. That's great. Then you move and, you know, maybe, maybe I'm going to do a, a free extra squadron attack. And if I happen to have linked turbolaser towers, ordnance pods can be, instead of just that one black die, I can actually roll three dice. You know, two black and a red, re-roll the red with Link Turbo Lasers, you know, and then now we actually have a, a nice little squadron attack, at least on one enemy squadron. It's, it can be kind of fun. Ordnance Pods is one of those things that I, I don't take that often, and usually when I take it, I end up going up against builds that have, like, no squadrons. But when it does work, it can be very fun. Um, so that's a, a, a Resolute build option. Um, let's look at a Triumphant build option. Uh, so this is this is a fun one. Um, so for this one, I decided to go with a Venator 1, and, uh, and and because I wanted to do something that was going to be kind of out there, far forward, kind of in your face, um, and and I put Tarkin on this one, maybe in this fleet. He doesn't have to be on this ship, because I don't think I would want uh, him necessarily you know, on the flagship that's going toe-to-toe -to -toe into the enemy fleet with exp expanded launchers of all things. Of course, this is increasing that front. This makes your front die... It's just insane, right? You're running um, five black dice printed. No, well, not printed, but five black dice in your front arc. Um, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Of course, we put ordnance experts there. Uh, XI-7 turbo lasers. So if we do get all that stuff, you're not redirecting it all the way around your shield. So we're going to get a lot through even if you brace. Um, and, uh, and then we have some interesting stuff here. So Triumphant uh, is going to kind of be there to be that ship that moves forward. Hey, some squadrons can now activate off of me. I don't have to do the squadron command, and that's why I went with the Venator 1 instead of the Venator 2, because I don't need to be doing the squadron command. Maybe I'll do a concentrate fire when I get that close. Might have to do some engineerings, because if I'm the if I'm the spearhead, I'm probably going to get shot first. Um, and of course, Tarkin is going to work with this. We can, if, if he was on here, he could get extra engineering when he needs it. Uh, if not, he can get tokens for everything else. Um, there's some other things that I put on this build too, like hyperspace rings could be a really fun one here. It would get me three squadrons 
um, to be able to start out farther out there. You know, I, I, Hyperspace Rings is one of those new Clone Wars cards that came out that I was just haven't been that crazy about. But if I want to start with some Arc 170s farther out, maybe I start them farther out and then this guy catches up and that's a good reason to have Triumphant on there. I think Triumphant and Hyperspace Rings work fairly well together. Um, and since it's a Venator 1, hey, all fighters follow me it can absolutely work here. So when we are getting close up there, it's also another way to get them farther, farther out helping Triumphant kind of fill that extra extendo bubble. And then uh, we have Clone Captain Silver on here to help us with some nav in case we do have to do engineering. He can give us a little extra nav ability. So I think that's fun. You know, got to speed up to get in the range, but then at a certain point, then you want to slow down so you don't overshoot who you're trying to get in black dice range of. Next up, and for the final build for the video, we're going to go with a Tranquility build. Again, I did mention Luminara works pretty well with this one. Um, and, of course, I have her on board. And this would be uh, make for just a really nice flagship. Um, and, and so I like I, I like a lot of things that are going on with this build. And, of course, you probably maybe want some aces, some you know, some maybe some Jedi out there flying around. And then uh, and just kind of maximizing Luminara's ability with Tranquility to uh, to help make sure that you spend only one token. Still kind of, you know, it, you, the punishment for spending only one token is very, very small. Of course, you can spend more if you want. I put Addy Gallia on here because, uh, you know, I think it kind of really works with Luminara. Um, Addy is basically allowing you to kind of, you know, do a free redirect. If you spend only one token, you kind of get to do a, like a free redirect to one other hull zone, uh, but the rest has to go straight to your hull. So, I mean, like, hey, that'd be really great against like a squadron attack. Like, it's only one damage. Okay, boom, it goes away for free, you know, or maybe I'm salvoing you or something like that. Or maybe I spend zero tokens, right? That can also be a thing, but then Addy's not going to work. Addy works really good if you're spending just one token. She fits into this whole thing. Um, Clone Gunners is there just to give you extra dice. We got external racks also there to give you extra dice too, so that can also work. It just gives you some offensive capability. Again, that's not really the theme here, but you always do want to have offensive capability. Look, that's a lot of dice not to have some kind of mitigating stuff. Um, but one of the great things about this ship is that it can salvo really, really well. And so, uh, you know, let's put some great upgrades to let it salvo. That's, that's There's a lot of new salvo uh, salvo heavy upgrades that have come out. Uh, the DB-827 heavy turbo lasers are going to be great for salvoing. Flak guns are going to be great for salvoing. And Luminara is going to be like, oh, I'm just going to salvo you. And then, boom, get something else. Or, or somebody else does something and now all of a sudden my salvo gets readied again. So this is a ship that can salvo multiple times. And then uh, Thermal Shields is also nice with, uh, you know, just to protect against the accuracy, stopping your brace. Um, and, and it kind of works for a lot of that stuff. And it's also unique to the Clone Wars. So, you know, you're not uh, not really able to put Thermal Shields on your Imperial and Rebel ships. So got to kind of take advantage of some of the fringe benefits of being a prequel era ship. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, those are, those are some build ideas. So um, that's kind of my look at the Venator. It kind of does a little bit of everything. And uh, it's not bad. At uh, just about any of those roles, it's actually really great as a uh, carrier. I mean, again, you can get freaking eight activations, uh, eight, 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 uh, eight squadrons activated from just one dial. That's, you know, it, you know, if you got the token also. It's insane. It's, 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 it's fantastic. All right, so... That is going to wrap this up. Uh, we'll be doing more. I'd love to hear more from you guys. Uh, be sure to join the Discord. Uh, check out the links that are down in the description below. If you want to get some shirts, or if you want to join Patreon, or any kind of anything like that, there's all that stuff is down down there. So if you're on desktop, you just click the See More button. If you're on mobile, I think there's a more info like on this side or something something to that effect. Um, but yeah, that's that's gonna do it, guys. I'm still covering Armada and uh, and you know covering all these Star Wars games as well. Big thanks to my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing, and I couldn't do this without your continued support. So thank you guys for sticking around, sticking with me. Uh, and you guys are amazing. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. And don't forget, as always, don't stick a lightsaber directly into your eye when you're looking at it for the first time. Make sure you know which end is the is the sparky point. <laughs>